the city, whether all sorts reside, noble and simple, rich and poor, young and old, from all places and countries, either for pleasure, necessity, or all manner of employment. The great singularity of London was its size. During the course of the 17th century, London's position as the hub of the national economy and the nation's premier market strengthened. People flocked to London for work, capital, political ideas and intellectual stimulus. And by 1700, the sprawling metropolis, with a population of half a million or so, was the largest city in Europe, as well as the commercial and financial centre of the world. The reconstruction of the city after the Great Fire in 1666 also stimulated the demand for labour, providing new opportunities for enterprising and skilled craftsmen some of whom made a name for themselves and a considerable business. Standards of living rose and many Londoners enjoyed new levels of prosperity. Artisans and shops offered a wider range of goods than ever before, while the growing appetite for popular and modish trifles and all manner of luxuries encouraged competition, innovation and specialisation. Grinling Gibbons was the most celebrated British woodcarver of the 17th century. Born in Rotterdam in 1648 to British parents, Gibbons completed his initial apprenticeship in the Low Countries before emigrating to London in around 1667. He went first to York where he worked for John Etty, a leading architect craftsman in the city. It is not known how long Gibbons stayed in York but he did later move to Deptford, which was the site of an important naval dockyard. It was in a cottage here that he was discovered by John Evelyn in January 1671, carving the extraordinary biblical relief panel, the Crucifixion after Tintoretto, which is today held at Dunham Massey in Cheshire. This day first acquainted His Majesty with that incomparable young man, Gibson, whom I had lately met with in an obscure place, and that by mere accident. As I was walking near a poor, solitary thatched house, in a field in our parish, near Says Court, I found him shut in, but looking into the window, I perceived him carving that large cartoon or crucifix of Tintoret, a copy of which I had also myself brought from Venice, where the original painting remains. The crucifixion carving kick-started Gibbon's career, who then went on to work at Windsor Castle, St Paul's Cathedral, Hampton Court, and Whitehall and Kensington Palaces. And in 1693, he was appointed as Master Sculptor and Carver to the Crown. In 